Trolls have been in D&D since the very beginning, and they're one of my favorite creatures to use in any campaign setting. And that's why I'm incredibly excited that they're in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, and that they have a new variety of trolls that you can use in your games. There's new types of trolls in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. How did these come about? What are they? So trolls are a staple of Dungeons and & Dragons, and they have been going all the way back to the first edition Monster Manual, where they appear on the cover with their long noses and their green skin. And the inspiration for them certainly comes from a lot of European folklore, where trolls of various sorts appear. But there is a specific influence for the D&D troll, and that is Pal Anderson's novel, Three Hearts and Three Lions. And that's where we get the regenerating troll. It's in that novel where you see the troll whose limbs are lopped off and then those limbs animate. And that was the inspiration for us in the fifth edition monster manual, including as an option, this ability called loathsome limbs, where as you fight the troll, pieces of it are animating. In many ways, it is one of the first icky monsters of Dungeons and Dragons, going all the way back again to that first edition monster manual. So we decided in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, we're gonna lean into that ickiness. And so in this book, we provide a variety of trolls and the theme for all of them is mutation. This idea that trolls can be mutated by what they eat, including each other, because uh, there are cannibal trolls who then can sprout multiple heads. But then there are also trolls where if they are killed or seemingly killed by certain energy forms, they can then regenerate mutated by the energy form that killed them. So in this book, we have you know, trolls who are uh, mutated by psychic energy. We have trolls that come back and they're rotting. Again, we have trolls with multiple heads. This idea that it's almost, it's almost like a troll's body is this colony of things constantly regenerating, constantly mutating. Honestly, once we started walking down this road, it's like we could fill half a book just with <laughs> horrific trolls. Uh, so for people who like trolls, going back to the original, uh, now we, we, we provide you essentially a buffet of trolls that what's really neat about them is that now they can pop up in specific locations. Uh, you know, like again, there's the ghostly troll, uh, others where if you want to emphasize disease and rot you could have a troll lurking in the sewers of a city and its abilities are going to be different uh, from one of the other sorts of trolls. So these are some really great pieces for building some adventures, for building some scariness, uh, and I hope will also inspire DMs to customize other versions of mutated trolls because in many ways the sky is the limit uh, once you start thinking about all the ways you could alter trolls based on what they eat, based on what almost kills them. Uh, we also talk about that they can also be mutated by powerful magic in their environment. They can be mutated by planar uh, rifts and portals that are near them. This is what I mean, like once you kind of open this creative gate, uh, you can just fill campaigns <laughs> with trolls. Thank you, Jeremy Crawford, for being on the show. You can order Morning Canyon's Tome of Foes right now on teendbeyond.com by clicking on the link in this video description. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.